Hello and welcome back to the course on dealing with materials data. I am Hina Gokhale. I am Guru Rajan. And uh, we both have taken a journey with along with all of you through the process of learning the basics of statistics and applying and using the tools to understand what the statistics does to the data. Uh, the purpose when we started this course was very simple that uh, we wanted to have a basic understanding of statistics before actually the tools are being uh, put to use. So that uh, the analysis that one does with the tools uh, becomes meaningful. Also the purpose was that before uh, in some cases uh, before you perform the experiment itself if you do a little bit of a planning for experiment and understand uh, statistically as to what analysis that you wish to do in future and for that what kind of uh, you know experiment should be designed that also can come handful, uh, handy to you. But as I said before all these uh, basic understanding is insufficient until you have the tool in your hands and I am sure uh, Guru will agree with me on that front. Yes, surely. So the tool that we have used for this course is R uh, which is an open source uh, programming language. Uh, it is freely available and you can use it uh, both in uh, Linux and uh, Windows and Mac whichever machine uh, that you use. So, it does not matter which platform you use. And on top of it uh, there are lots of libraries that are freely available and uh, it is very active community. So, as we have seen in the design of experiments uh, uh, session there are uh, programs that are being made available by people there that are being developed. And it also allows us to actually contribute to this uh, community if we come up with a new library or program or uh, um, any such development that we make. So that way it is a useful tool to have and it is a very nice tool to use and uh, I hope uh, you had enjoyed uh, working with R in for the past uh, uh, 12, 12 weeks. weeks, yeah, so 3 months. Yeah, yeah it is a long time. <laughs> long time, yeah. Uh, well, um, I would like to repeat once again few things here. Uh, you know, uh, these days the computing tools and computational techniques are very easily available and accessible to us uh, on uh, our even small laptop. And uh, they are very attractive because there goes in a data and here comes out a beautiful graph or nice table explaining something. The question is have we used the right tool or the question is whatever graphs and tables have come what do they say. Uh, also the question becomes is that uh, there are many options available which option to choose. These are the questions which can be answered only by understanding the basics of statistics. I once again say that if you want to use uh, machine learning, if you want to use artificial intelligence, it is important to know the basics of statistics. You do not have to learn the great theories of statistics and probability. But if the basic uh, you know concepts are clear if the assumptions are known, you know that when you try to use these tool what errors can occur or is this the correct tool for this purpose. If this information is available with you then the tools are put to use in the better way and therefore this course has throughout emphasized that uh, what is the basics of statistics, what are the assumptions made from where does the where did this procedure come and how to interpret the results and uh, therefore we chose the open source uh, uh, software where so that uh, it is not bound by you know what you buy or uh, what your uh, organization can afford to buy 
but you can use it at anywhere and uh, start uh, becoming almost a data analyst. What do you say Guru? Yeah, surely. <laughs> Uh, but like everything else in life, I think we need a balance here. Yes. So my advisor used to say that nobody gets drenched in a simulated rain. So you can freely go, take the computer, do lots of things with uh, um, simulation and coding and programming and things like that. So that is one viewpoint. Uh, there is merit to it. I also strongly urge you to play with R, take the data, do things. Some of them might be silly, some of them might be stupid, some of them might be wrong. And some of them might be great, so it's fine to do that. On the other hand, I have also seen a textbook on numerical methods for differential equations which said that you should resist the temptation for computation as long as possible. In the sense that you should not just jump in because you just have a tool, you know. I have a hammer so everything is a nail, I am going to keep banging on top of everything. So that is not the right way. So there is a time to play, there is a time to explore, uh, but there is also and, and there is lots of learning that happens when you are relaxed like that and you are just uh, fooling around with uh, things. But there is also a time when you have to know the basics, the background, the setting in which we are doing what we are doing and intelligently steering our calculations through when we face difficulties or when we have some results interpreting it and doing the next right thing. So that way it is very important to pay attention to the uh, basics which is the statistical theories in this case and then using it and implementing it in R. And so when you reinforce these two things the balance also brings you I think a much deeper understanding. Yes, so, I agree hmm. because uh, I also find that uh, just learning the theory for one thing it becomes very boring. It does not remain any more interesting. So if you apply the tools. Uh, then you come to a stage where you realize you actually see the realization of what theory you have learned. Uh, sometimes you learn by mistake also. You have a hunch uh, as they say it in uh, art of uh, data science that uh, you have to have a hunch. It is you cannot be exploring absolutely in dark using statistics. So you have to have a hunch that my answer has to be in this vicinity or the solution has to come something of this form. When it does not come, you have to realize that something has gone wrong somewhere. Now it could be the tool and it could be the understanding of the theory. So both of them go hand in hand and I think that is why we made it a point that this course we go through by having a theory and a practice, a theory and a practice so that uh, things could uh, match with each other and you also do not get uh, tired with this statistical theory. So one week of theory and one week of uh, playing around with data is uh, what we have designed and I believe that uh, it has worked well. So we have also made sure that even though things are uh, together, uh, but they can also be independent by themselves. So there is an option for you. Uh, to just uh, do the odd weeks or even weeks, the theory weeks or the practical weeks. Uh, uh, so you can uh, do one, but uh, it is the, the maximum benefit that you can derive is when you do both, but it is not necessarily have to alternate. So you can finish one and you can do the other or you can keep going back and forth, which is the most uh, uh, recommended uh, thing from us. Uh, because uh, you, you do something, you go deeper into theory and then go take a practical case, take a data, try to do all that that you have learned, think about it uh, and uh, like Hina was saying, you should know what is the number that you are expecting. You know, I had a physics teacher who said before writing down approximately what you are expecting, you are not supposed to solve the problem. And once when you do this, you also develop an intuition for the numbers. You also develop an understanding for things, you know, you expect it to be this and then surprisingly you get something else and then you understand why and, and that is where the real understanding starts uh, coming in. Uh, so I have seen that with the data you have an uh, innate understanding which I do not still have, uh, but that is because of continuous working like this and thinking through things. And uh, so we hope that uh, you will do it uh, whichever fashion you like, but uh, both the parts so that you will get the complete picture. Yes, and with respect to statistics also, we have not kept it very heavy with uh, theory as you must have noticed. 
the very very basic concepts with starting with the descriptive statistics and probability and random variable and some special distribution and we got into immediately with the estimation and hypothesis testing. But the real uh, applications have started uh, with regression in which we have not gone into much of a theory. And uh, in this area I would like to bring it to your notice that uh, you must be feeling that on one hand somewhere in the course we have said that uh, in the field of material science and material engineering uh, the data tends to be uh, not in a beautiful bell shape curve they generally tend to be skewed. And then we use central limit theorem and then we try to you know uh, de develop the theory for hypothesis testing, regression etc. using only uh, normal assumption. But uh, if you recall when we go to the ANOVA uh, it is made very clear that you do not have to stick to the distributions. The T statistic the chi-square statistic and the f statistic. The z statistic will hardly play a role, it will never happen that you already know a variance. So, I am discounting that. But this 3 statistic basically you have to understand is that if the values comparatively look very large, then it is not meeting your hypothesis. Uh, it is not uh, meeting with your understanding that some parameter is 0 and therefore it is a critical region. Uh, it is true with respect to the uh, F statistic, it is true with respect to T statistic. Only when you want to look into those tables or exactly find out what is the probability of critical region alpha pro type 1 error, you need to make a assumption on distribution. That too I would say if you are doing simulation what I would do is I would simulate it about uh, 10,000 times and find out the right number where does it fall by you know rearranging them in an order like we did for the Weibull distribution. You do not have to actually know the distribution at all, you just generate the numbers and do it. So, uh, the point here I wanted to make is that uh, if any time you felt that on one hand we are learning everything with the assumption of normality, but on the other hand Weibull and log normal are more important for us is what is being said and then you have all skewed distributions, then the solution lies here that it is the F statistic, T statistic per se not the distribution which are important. So, from the point of view of uh, using R. Um, what we have seen is that uh, you can get lots of information just by plotting. Right. You should uh, try to explore the data as much as possible and uh, visually reading information is still very useful and uh, it is a good skill also to have. So, that is one. Second thing you should not hesitate to do simulations if it is needed. And so, we have de uh, dealt with simulation in several different uh, um, scenarios. And we have done different kinds of simulations, you know, bootstrapping or calculating or estimating pi, for example. Uh, so, so different kinds of uh, calculations uh, that you can do using simulations. In general, I have found that uh, students, typically depending on what they do, uh, get some kind of mental block. The students who do more uh, computational type of work uh, typically spend more time on physics-based models. Uh, solving PDEs and things like that, uh, statistical simulations are uh, relatively rare. On the other hand, those who do experiments uh, do not even look at statistics or do any analysis, even basic ones that you can do uh, simply by taking origin or Excel or R for that matter. So, we wanted to bridge this gap. Students who are comfortable with the terminology, who are not put off by terminologies like hypothesis testing or Bayesian inference. So, just to give them that uh, uh, one familiarity that they are not afraid of hearing these words and it makes some sense to them. And the second thing after they become familiar they try to explore it on their own and try to do similar things on their own. So, that is the purpose of this course uh, that they are familiar with the terminology, they know what is the uh, at the back end and they are able to do it themselves using R. So, yeah, I think overall that was our purpose and uh, 
I think uh, see this metallurgy as a, in the eyes of statistician I find that uh, it is a very peculiar subject, maybe it is there in others I do not know. Generally the data generated generation is very expensive. So, you have 2 or 3 data at the most 5 data and uh, we are very joyful and celebration mood for that that we have got a 5 or 7 data points. On the other hand today uh, materials data science is going to play a major role because uh, lot of past data is being generated and it is being uh, stored as a database and we would like to make use of it. So, I feel that uh, material science and materials engineering need a very strong techniques of statistics which in which on one hand n tends to infinity and on the other hand n is very small. And uh, this, this covers a complete uh, span of uh, statistics and uh, computation only makes it possible. So, bootstrapping uh, technique as uh, you said or uh, you know many other simulation techniques are the only ones in our hands when the data is very small. While when the data is very large the Bayesian inference regression models etc etc I mean you can go further even beyond this course you can use uh, heuristic models such as artificial neural network or genetic algorithm or you know any of these heuristic models and use it. But when I say this again this course plays a very important role because when you use any of these models particularly I am referring to the heuristic model the type 1 and type 2 error play a decisive role in deciding how good is your model and uh, sometimes it is forgotten and it need not be forgotten it need not be forgotten I can go ahead and say that it should not be forgotten because that gives the strength to your model and uh, that is one another takeaway I would say from this course that uh, even if you try to apply uh, data analysis techniques beyond this course some basic concepts that have been given in this course may please be kept in mind because here they may have been given in the context of for example what I gave right now is in hypothesis testing. But then it applies to any situation where you are trying to make a judgment using a data and fitting a model to it. Yeah, so to go back to the original point about uh, the data, so the existing data is very limited. So one of the things that we expect that will happen after you do this course is that you will curate data better. Even when data is available, for example, we discussed uh, it in the case study on Halpage many many information uh, about the data is missing. For example, there is a grain size, but the distribution information is missing. So, unless you have the complete information, then making inference based on that data becomes problematic. And so, we hope that all of you irrespective of whether you are doing experiments or modeling will curate your data better. Second thing, you will also make it available as much as possible for everybody. Mostly data is analyzed and uh, it is uh, presented in a form where uh, the original data is lost and sometimes if you want to redo some of the analysis, it becomes important to have the data in the original form. So, we also hope that uh, you will get into the habit of curating uh, the data better and sharing it as widely as possible and go back to the literature. Again going back to the Halpage study, for 70 years people have been using Halpage and the conclusion we drew is that there is no evidence uh, neither experimental nor theoretical to justify Halpage. So maybe there are surprises waiting there if you go back to the data in the literature and put it in a form in which you can analyze it at a much broader level. So we hope that this course will help you do both and you will do it and get back to us about your experience. So overall can we say Guru that uh, this course uh, is a beginning? Yes. It is, uh, it is just a beginning, you are starting a journey and uh, we invite you uh, to explore either side. You can explore the side of complete computational uh, data analysis, uh, you can also explore the side uh, to learn uh, more details of uh, machine learning 
and in machine learning different techniques that are being used and how the statistics applies there and how you can improve upon your computational capabilities uh, by using those theory. So, I think this course uh, is just a beginning, it, we cannot even call an introduction, but it is just truly a dealing with materials data as a first step you know and you get the feel for the data is where we have started. Yeah. And we will also give them an open invite that we both are open. Uh, anytime they explore, they want to find something new or they have found something new, uh, they are welcome. welcome to get in touch with us. And, yes. Uh, yeah. And we encourage you that yeah. you further explore the field of uh, materials data analysis because it is going to be one of the very important field in the future. So, we wish you that you, this is the beginning of a very long journey, a fruitful journey and a satisfying journey. Yeah. So, welcome to Materials Data and have fun. Thank you. <laughs>